All right, guys, here we go. Check it out. Welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? All right, here it is, part two. 2012 Dodge Durango SXT. This car is kicking our butt. We are in DEF CON 5. We are definitely in, in, in damage control mode. <laughs> All right, so last episode, we checked out the, um, we swapped out the ignition coils, the spark plugs, the fuel injectors, and still the misfire stayed on number three cylinder. So let's find out what are we gonna do today, right here on Astro Auto Repairs. <sighs> This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, we have definitely <laughs> hitting across a big brick wall right here. So, I just spoke to the customer. I had to verify everything. The customer said, he said that that little misfire he's feeling is actually, he feels it actually all the time. He said he used to feel it when it's cold and it warms up, it stops. Now he feels it all the time. So and according to us, we, we didn't feel it till we actually warmed up the engine. Okay. Sherlock, was it Sherlock Holmes? What was it Einstein? I think it was Sherlock Holmes. And I, don't quote me on word for word for this. What do you say, Sivvy? So what the heck are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, when you come up. It's possible, is it possible, the impossible or impossible? Yeah, if you come across whatever. a problem, you eliminate the possible. Once you eliminate the possible, whatever's left, even, even though how improbable, will be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> we eliminated the ignition coil, 100%. We eliminated the spark plug, 100%. We eliminated the fuel injector, 100%. Huh? Is Billy Bob here? What? Because I stopped? Yeah, the heck, man. Well, silence. Yeah, heck yeah, man. This is... This is a kicking, kicking astral butt. <laughs> and we can't repair it. Nobody can. We better get on top of this right now. All right. We are in damage control. Definitely. DEFCON 5. 6. Wait. All right. I, we know the Chryslers, the Hemis, have a problem with the valve springs and the valves. This one I'm not so sure about. This is what? a 3.6, in case we didn't mention that. Let's do a compression test. Maybe if we do a compression test on these two cylinders and compare them. If we got anything wrong with a valve, maybe it's not seating all the way or whatever, the compression would be lower and it would definitely cause that issue. Especially in... All right. All right, guys, I'm going to take, take these two spark plugs out. I'm going to disable the fuel pump, and we're going to do a compression test together. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, I took both spark plugs out of here, and what I did was take out a 10-amp fuse that was located right there, and that fuse goes to the fuel pump. We do not need this thing to be running when we do this test. All right, so let's, let's check out a good cylinder first. Let's put our tool in there. And I'm going to crank this over and we're going to see what kind of reading we get. Alright, here you go, Sibby. Here's the gauge. Too much. Okay. Uh, hey, uh... Don't hate me. Hate for horses. Uh, uh, man, you're killing me. Don't need wish Billy Bob was here. All right, ready? Well, that wasn't good. Huh? 
What's the comp compression supposed to be? That seems a little low to me. Oh, you know what? Let me, um, hold on. Let's, let's do this again. You know, it's funny. We did have a little misfire. Number one, let me do it again. What is, how do we know what compression is supposed to be? I don't know. Damn, what is it? About uh, 130? Dang it. Okay. Let's check this other cylinder. The cylinder 3? Yeah, this one's cylinder three. Twenty. So you about the same. Well, the other was a little higher, just a little. Just a little higher. Oh man! Let's go back and try this one, first one, one more time. That's not much of a difference at all, though. That should have been... Okay. Okay. Might be even a little lower. 130? 130 and the other one was 120. That's only 10 PSI a difference. I mean, it is a very small misfire. Uh, but still, I think that compression is. That's a little low. What about checking cylinder 5? I know that's more work for you. Just out of curiosity. All right, all right, guys. What we're gonna do? We're gonna pull off and check cylinder number five. We'll be right back. All right, guys. I'm taking it out of here. Let's check number five. Same as number one. One thirty? Yeah. Alright, let's go back. So we got identical numbers on one and five, but a little less on number three. Mm -hmm. Now very little. Very little, but our misfire is so slight as well. Yeah, you can't really feel it. No, you can't, but the computer is picking it up. So, we got, I mean, what's the possible, what's the chances of you getting identical numbers on two cylinders? 
people would use a poster, right? I mean, sometimes they vary a little bit, but that's identical. And then the one we don't, we have a problem one. We got almost 10 or 5, 130, 120. All right, let's try it together. One twenty. Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference there. There, I'm sorry. That's just no. It was two lines. We was at one forty, wasn't we? Or was it one thirty five? Was one line above one twenty or two? Two lines, but that wouldn't be one forty. Oh right? no, no, no. Twenty, thirty, forty, twenty five. No, thirty. So ten psi difference. There is definitely a ten psi difference. But will that be enough? To cause this thing to have a little slight misfire. Will it? It can. I mean, that's because the valve's not seating all the way. It can cause that little misfire. You know what? Let's put all we're gonna let's we're gonna put our all our spark plugs back in. Put the fuel pump fuse back in. And guys, we're going to step our game up a little bit. Just, what if we got a bad driver coming from the computer? So, let's grab our Autel AL... That's right, guys. Let's grab our Autel AL 539B. And we're going to graph right at the coil, each coil, to see if they're all the same. And making sure there's no kind of um, variation in the way that graphs. So, let's get all that back. Get all this back together. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got everything hooked up. Check it out. This is what we're going to do. We're going to warm the car up. Even though I got the idle air temperature sensor disconnected, that's cool. We're going to clear the check engine out, out anyway. Now, all your coils, just like you injected, you're going to have a wire that's constantly hot. Hot when the ignition is on. And you can tell by that, but if you look at the colors of them, it's going to be the wire that's the same color on each coil. It looks like this is orange or blue or blue or yellow or something like that no that was different there's the brown looks like a brown with a yellow line or brown something so we know that's going to be the hot wire and the other side is coming from the computer to pulse the ground we're going to be connecting to the grounded side now what you want to do is take your Autel AL539B man this machine is bad and I got my alligator clips hooked onto the end. Now what I'm going to do here is pop this fuse box up. We're going to connect our positive over to the positive side. Dang it. Okay. And our negative, what we're going to do here is get us a little piercing, piercing probe. We're going to connect to the first, we're going to go over to this side first. We're just going to go in there and just hook it just a little bit. That little fine point just barely went in there and touching that wire. And it's going to be connected to the grounded side. Turn that one more time. It's going to be connected to the grounded side like that. Okay. Making sure it's not touching anything. And what we're going to do here is cut on your auto. And this is the way you're graphing each and every coil and what we're going to do here is go down to multimeter now you're going to be going down if you go down one that's DC voltage we're not going for DC voltage we're going down further to AC voltage and that way it's going to show waveform so what I'm going to do here you might have to hold that in case I I'm going to start the car up run and what we're looking for you see it once in a while not the line you're not worried about the lines what you want what you're looking for is once in a while you see that pattern right there that's the coil coming on 
holding on and then Kuda shutting it off. That's what we're going to be looking for. All right, but let me let this car warm up and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got hooked up to cylinder number one right now. On the grounded side, the side is coming from the computer. And what we're looking for here is a difference between cylinder one and cylinder three. Especially when we get to a, let's see if it shows right there. That's what we're looking for right there. We want to make sure those are not distorted. Okay. Let's switch over to cylinder number three. See, that's a nice, pretty much square pattern right there. So I'm convinced my computer, the computer, is doing its job. It's not breaking down. I'm definitely confident of that. And the only thing we've got going on is a difference in uh, compression. right back. All right guys, let's try something else here. Remember how we can graph all injectors at the same time? Check this little trick out. Take it off the negative side. Flip it on and remember keep your uh, positive over there. Flip it over to the hot side, either one. Now what you're going to get now is now you're getting, even though how little it is, you're going to get a graph of all six cylinders. Make sure we're making a good connection here. Hold on, let me make a get a better, better connection over on this one. Sometimes you can catch it. There it is. We don't see one of them spiking up, which means I know now my computer is doing its job. Now, if, if once we got that little pattern right there and we saw one of them was spiking up, then I know my computer has an issue, but we do not. That thing is perfect. So we definitely have an internal engine problem here. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so this is the end of part two on this two, uh, 2012 Dodge Durango with a 3.6 engine, and you guys saw the result. We spoke to the customer. They decided um, they're not going to go forward with it. They're actually going to try to trade it in, I believe. So if you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at Tim at AstralAutoRepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astral Auto Repairs. If we can't repair it, nobody can. See you next time.